Michelle Gerard, welcome to Kids Express Conversations. It is such a delight to have this opportunity to meet with you and, and chat with all things about Braddock Public School, but particularly during this time in lockdown. Michelle, I'm wondering if you could start by telling us a little bit about Braddock Public School and some of the challenges that you um, might be affecting your school and your community at the moment. Um, Braddock Public School is, we're located in Cranbrook, which is about five minutes uh, outside of Penrith, and we have 320 students. Our enrolments fluctuate, though we have quite a transient, transient population. Uh, and our students come from both uh, public and private housing. We have uh, a large FOE, which is Family Occupational Ed Education Index, um, which has our, a significant number of our students in the lowest quartile of socioeconomic disadvantage. We have a number of students who uh, are in uh, out-of-home care. Uh, we have 33% uh, um, of our students identify as Aboriginal. But I wonder right now when we look at... Um that literally if we just look at lockdown, what's, what do you fear right now for our children? Uh, the thing I, I probably fear the most is the increase, the, 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 their feelings of isolation and the, the increase frequency of, of mental health concerns and anxiety for our children. We were seeing that more frequently before lockdown, before last year's COVID lockdown, and, and that's something we, and we had to do a significant amount of support when our students came back to get them into routine, to, for them to be become um, re-familiar, to familiarise them again with um, what it was to, to be at school, to know that, to, to ensure that they knew that we were we were there for them. Um, and I, I suppose the thing I fear the most is that we're not See, we're not seeing them every day, so we're not seeing um, their anxieties to be able to, to allay those any fears or anxieties they have. One of the things that we're focusing on for our school plan is, is connections between our students with each other, connections for our students with their teachers, connections with our teachers, with parents, and I feel that um, we're obviously very off track with that at the moment. In, on a face-to-face -face perspective because we're doing everything online, but we're working um, almost uh, t twice as hard to make sure those connections remain uh, um, electronically via phone, via Zoom, via Seesaw. Um, but it's, yeah, I, I fear that, um, that they'll feel isolated. That really important piece around connection is just such a vital thing that we're all missing at the moment. And I think that particularly for our children and from a Kids Express point of view, even before we knew what COVID-19 was, we already knew that there was uh, significant issues um, across the board in Australia in terms of children's mental health, and Kids Express has very much been advocating in that space. Um, but now that we have COVID and now we have the sense of isolation um, for everybody, but we must not forget that this also affects our children. So yes. finding ways for their children to feel connected and within that connection have a sense of safety mm. and a place to go yeah, we were saying, I was talking to a colleague yesterday about the fact that in addition to the, the sense of isolation and the um, and not connecting with with their with their peers and with other families, there's also the fact that they're constantly exposed to the media and social media, which as adults, it's difficult to switch off, but we do because we can make a conscious effort to say, that's enough, I can't hear anymore. And also we have the maturity and we're grown up to be able to put that into perspective. Children don't. And if they don't have the people at home also who don't have the nous to do that either, then it puts them in and there's another layer of, of, of concern in terms of what it is they're being exposed to with all of the news reports about, about COVID. If you could add or change anything to the education system right now, what do you think would have the greatest impact on the well-being of students and children? I actually think um, coming from the approach of having experts in their specific areas in schools on site to tap into. So we we had done a significant amount of work on well-being. 
we did positive behaviour for learning, that we are safe, respectful, responsible students. We, we teach our children how to behave in certain settings. We refer them to the counsellor when we're required. If they need a behaviour support plan, we really work to make sure there's skills and strategies in that support plan that will make a difference to, beha- difference to behaviour. We, we've, we've done a, a whole lot of professional learning on students uh, in trauma, students in with with behaviour needs, with uh, occupational therapy needs, but we're not any of those things. We are educators. We're experts in education. So to to answer your question in terms of what would I change, I would actually add it as an option for schools to have occupational therapists, speech therapists, expressive therapists on site as a part of staff to add that expertise above and beyond education. Um, and because because we've seen that it works. From from a Kids Express point of view, we currently have supporters asking us what they can do. Um, I know one of the things we did recently is as lockdown came, we we got together very quickly. We sent out kits to um, you know expression kits to children, which I know a lot of children and families were greatly excited mm-hmm. and appreciated by. But I'm just wondering, what else do you think at the moment or in the future, when when, locked, when lockdowns are a thing of the past, et cetera, what do you think the Kids Express supporters could be doing for your school now and in the future? Absolutely, the the resources in terms of the packages. Uh, the we we gave out some some things last year with the pencil cases, yeah. and they had great resources in them. That's fantastic as well because it allows the the students who don't have those things at home to be able to to put those things in their home to be able to then practice what it is they're learning with 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 the Kids Express yeah. therapists, but also you know do some some learning from from home as well because our. Uh, uh, a lot of our community don't have those resources on hand. I just want to also acknowledge and thank you as the leader of Braddock Public School for how you've embraced Kids Express. I think you mentioned at the beginning about safety um, and people emotionally feeling safe and welcome and that, that sense of nurture, and that does come from the top. And I know my team feel it every single day um, from you. Um, I really applaud that you have put the trauma-informed and expressive therapy really at this the, the centre of your school. I mean, the fact that we have a cottage, uh, kids, the Kids Express Cottage is just wonderful, knowing that, that children in your school bring friends to Kids Express in the breaks, et cetera, because it's, the safe play, it's a safe place to go and talk about your feelings. But this comes from the top. This comes from you and your executive and your staff allowing children to have emotion and finding safe places for them to be able to process that. So I, I, on behalf of Kids Express, our board, the staff and our supporters, I just really want to applaud and thank you for the opportunity we have to partner with Braddock Public School. Um, we learn a great deal as well as we as we move forward in our vision and creating a future all children deserve. So it is an honour to to work with you and your school. So thank you so much for that.